The Indian sports industry is one of the fastest growing in the world, although on a smaller base, and this is considerably higher than the 5% growth the world is seeing in terms of the sports industry in the last five years. A big roadblock with many young kids taking up a variety of sports is generally the problem of equipment and gear. Where to buy a good baby badminton racket, where to find gear for sports like horse riding or archery, or even for hiking. Well, we've got the answer for you the Decathlon Mega Store in Bangalore. It isn't a toy store we're talking about, but a mega sports mart. Decathlon. 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 Decathlon is bigger than Nike, Adidas and Reebok in India. Hi everybody, if you want to learn how to build a legendary business in a hyper competitive market, this episode is for you. If you're someone who wants to learn how to spot a gap in a crowded market, this episode is for you. Because the story that I'm about to tell you today is the story of a brand that has beaten giants like Nike and Adidas in their own game in India. While its competitors have star studded celebrity endorsements, this brand doesn't have any celebrity endorsing them, doesn't have any TV ad running and yet it does more revenue in India than Nike, Adidas and Reebok combined. This brand that I'm talking about is none other than Decathlon. And you will be stunned to know that while Adidas earned a revenue of 1,551 crores, Nike stood at 814 crores, Reebok stood at 417 crores, whereas Decathlon alone earned a revenue of 2,936 crores. The question is, without a big fat marketing budget, without a celebrity endorsement, how on earth did Decathlon crack the Indian market? What are the business strategies that helped them stand out in the crowded Indian sports market? And what are the business lessons that we need to learn from the iconic rise of Decathlon in India? This video is brought to you by ChatGPT plus Communication Masterclass course. People, if you are somebody who struggles to speak your ideas out in public, if you are somebody who lacks the confidence to speak in public, or if you are somebody who often mumbles while presenting your thoughts, I would highly recommend you to join our Communication Masterclass course. This course is a 6 weeks course whereby I will take you step by step from a beginner's level all the way up to a TEDx level presentation skill. The best part is that if you have any doubts, I will personally talk to you during our weekly live sessions to help you overcome every fear you have. Cherry on the cake, you will also get special access to the chat GPT module whereby I will teach you how to use the secret prompts in chat GPT for storytelling, for business research and even English speaking. This is why now it's communication masterclass plus chat GPT course put together. So if you also want to master your art of communication and if you want to present your ideas in the most powerful manner possible, come join our communication masterclass course using the link below. And I will see you in the live session. To understand the genius behind Decathlon, let me take you back to the nostalgic 1990s and early 2000s market of India. Synergy System from Action Shoes. Boost is the secret of my energy. Sachin! <laughs> This was a time when you and I were just super energetic children who spent all our summers playing cricket under the scorching heat of the sun. And during that time, if you remember, buying a tennis ball was a big big deal. This was because it required equal contribution from all 10 children. And after a lot of fighting and struggle, the moment we started playing, five balls down the line, there always used to be that one kid who hit the ball into a cranky uncle's house and that was it, game over. After that, we had no other option but to go home and drink Rasna. Good old days, isn't it? Now you tell me, when we bought those tennis balls, did we buy them from a branded store? Not at all, right? We used to visit that one old neighborhood shop where our chacha would sell sports goods. And the collection that he had was always limited to MRF bats, locally produced footballs, cycles and at best a cricket kit. This was the story of every middle class household in India. At the same time, for affluent people, there were high end brands like Nike, Reebok and Adidas at the mall. But even in those branded stores, they only sold shoes and apparel. That's it. 
But if you look at the sports market of India objectively, it was way beyond cricket and football, and it was way beyond just gully cricket. This market had four categories of people. The first type of customers were hopeful customers. These were people like you and me who had good skills with the game but always had a tight budget. In simple words, given a choice between English Willow and Kashmir Willow, we would always buy a Kashmir Willow because it was cheap. The second type of customers were beginners. These were people who had less skill plus a smaller budget, and these were people who would occasionally purchase sports goods just to try out a sport. And surprisingly, there are beginners in all sports in India, starting from tennis to badminton to even squash. But somehow, back then, the gear for these sports were not easily available. The third type of customer were casual enthusiasts. These people are not skilled, but they are rich enough to buy great products. For example, we always had this one kid who never scored beyond 10 runs, but always wore a Nike shoe and always played with an SG bat. Among adults, these are rich people who buy branded products even for a trip to Goa. So for them, branded items are primarily fashion choices. And finally, there are elites. These are individuals who possess both superior skills and financial flexibility. They would buy products not for a hobby but to improve their performance. Basically, professional players. This is a broad categorization of the sports market of India. Now, if we look at the brands for these different types of customers, we will see that Nike, Adidas, and Skechers always catered and still cater to the elites and casual enthusiasts in the market. But back in the early 2000s, there was a huge market of hopefuls and beginners that bought products only from neighborhood shops, as in the unorganized market. To put that into perspective, in 2012-13, while the sports goods market of India was worth two billion dollars, 75% of this market was unorganized, and only 25% was organized. So three out of four Indians were buying products from the neighborhood chacha rather than Nike and Adidas. So when decathlon entered the Indian market in 2009, instead of competing in the small market with big players, they decided to compete with the smaller players in the big unorganized market. So instead of making products for the elites and casual enthusiasts, they made products for hopefuls and the beginners with tight pockets in India. This is where we saw the rise of decathlon stores all across the country. There are 1,600 stores in almost 60 countries across the world. We are now on a fast acceleration from one store in 2009 to four stores in 2013, when we open to all to the half century mark today. Uh, in India, we provide over 50 sports, ranging from badminton to inline skates. Each decathlon store offers an amazing user experience through the store, events, and workshops. Now this brings us to the second step which is their store strategy. Now if you have ever been into a decathlon store you know that it's nothing short of a sportsman's paradise and there is something very special that makes you just want to buy everything. If you have ever felt this you are not the only one. Turns out decathlon's store design is so amazing that according to a study 37% of the people who came into a decathlon store ended up with a walk by purchase as in they were just walking by and they just decided to buy something from decathlon the question is what is so extraordinary about their store design well there are three elements that make decathlon stores super effective firstly if you have ever been to a decathlon store you would realize that it offers an immersive experience and inside the store each section has a complete set of gears for every single sport and each section gives you enough space to play and use the products freely this is what tempts you to buy the product in the retail business it's called the endowment effect so when customers touch or hold a product they begin to feel a sense of ownership over it and this feeling can make the product seem more valuable to them which eventually increases the probability of sale In terms of statistics, research says that shoppers who touch the products are willing to pay more for them than the shoppers who only look at the products. In fact, in an experiment, participants who could touch a mug were willing to pay 60% more for the mug than the participants who could only see the mug. Another study published in a journal stated that the longer a shopper holds an item, the more likely they are to buy it. So the study found that shoppers who held an item for 30 seconds were more likely to buy it as compared to the shoppers who held the item for 10 seconds. 
So do you see what Decathlon stores do? They make you touch and feel the product so well that automatically the endowment effect kicks in and makes you want to buy the product. The second element of the store has to do with their wonderful employees. Did you know Decathlon chooses only those people who are sports enthusiasts as their executives and they deliberately choose only those people who are actively playing the sport. On top of that during their training period they are given three instructions never sell to the customer always educate the customers and most importantly always allow the customers to freely use the products without disturbing them for example if you are a beginner looking for tennis shoes and you see three shoes costing 2000 3000 and 5000 ideally if you have the budget the staff must convince you to buy the 5000 rupee product but even then a decathlon staff would insist you to buy the 2000 rupee product only because it would be good enough for you and not just that because she is a sports player herself she will also explain why that product is best for you and these interactions cultivate such an amazing speed of trust that you can walk into a decathlon store without being scared of upsells or forced sales and finally the product placement of decathlon is what we found very very interesting we saw that decathlon offers products from just 100 rupees all the way to 1 lakh rupees and very smartly, they place their cheapest products at the entrance so that they can create an impression of affordable prices. Secondly, just like Walmart keeps the milk packets way inside the store, even Decathlon places the frequently bought products way inside so that while you walk inside, you can see other products and hence increasing the probability of impulse buying. According to a study, 84% of customers spent more than 30 minutes at the Decathlon store. And like we saw before, the more time they spend the products, the more likely are they to buy them. And lastly, to ensure recurring customers, Decathlon ensured that it always offered value for money by offering great quality products at reasonable prices. Their products are sturdy, they offer long-lasting warranties like a 2-year warranty on shoelaces and finally, they offer a price that's 30 to 40% cheaper than the competition. But the question over here is, how on earth are they able to sell products of such good quality at such low prices? Well, there are three straightforward reasons for that. Number one, just like Dmart, their stores are rented. Secondly, they do not spend aggressively on marketing and they do not spend on making their stores fancy. And most importantly, they manufacture their products in the same country they sell. For example, in India, they currently have eight partner factories where they manufacture their products. And by 2026, their aim is to locally produce 85% of their products. Now, this begs the question, if only cost was their USP, then how did Decathlon differentiate itself from other cheap brands and how did they stand out in the unorganized market of India? Well, this is where their innovation quadrant comes into play. This quadrant has four categories of products. The first category of products are products with small improvements and innovations. For example, in the unorganized market, the basic head torch was available with a 20-hour battery and a 30-lumen brightness light. But Decathlon worked on it and they optimized the product in such a way that they made a rechargeable head torch with a brightness of 200 lumen with a 30 hour battery life and with multiple lighting modes. So by default, the product stands out merely because of the specification. And this brings us to the second category where there are products which have technical innovations incorporated in them. For example, back then when you took normal bikes to a hilly terrain, you needed to manually change the gears. This is when Decathlon came up with a long distance 920E connected bike by Btwin. This bike offered an automatic gearing system that would automatically change the gears according to the terrain. This made pedaling way smoother and easier. So again, the product stands out because of the technical innovation which makes it way better and way easier to use. The third category of products are products that have extraordinary user experience innovation. For example, they worked obsessively to reduce the weight of trekking products by 15 to 20 percent. Now, for people like you and me, 15 to 20 percent lighter is not a significant improvement, right? But if you go and talk to a trekking enthusiast or a mountaineer, they will tell you that a 15 to 20 percent reduction in weight is a blessing and sometimes it could even be a life saver. And Decathlon did not just make trekking instruments lighter, they even made trekking clothes lighter. Once upon a time, their shorts weighed around 130 grams in size L, but they worked very hard on it and reduced it to just 100 grams. So if you carry 10 pieces of clothes, that's 300 grams reduced in just clothing. 
and their best record is making a t-shirt that weighs a record of just 50 grams. And this brings us to the last category of innovation, which are breakthrough innovation. And these innovations are literally ground-breaking innovations. For example, 10 years back, the time to pitch a tent was around 20 to 30 minutes. But you know what? Decathlon came up with a Keshua tent that could be put up in just 2 seconds. Yes, you heard that right. 2 seconds. Now this was groundbreaking because it saved the hikers a lot of time, a lot of energy and gave them extraordinary ease when they were in harsh climatic conditions. It also had a great feature of having the tent entirely dark so that the sunlight doesn't penetrate and disturb the trekker while she was sleeping. So do you realize when you see products that are so good, you don't need a celebrity or a fancy ad to convince you to buy them. This is how by choosing the untapped market of beginners and hopefuls, by building immersive and amazing stores and most importantly, by being obsessed with product innovation for four decades, Decathlon became a legend not just in India but all across the world. And this brings us to the last part of the episode, which are the lessons that we need to learn from the iconic rise of Decathlon. Lesson number one, while most entrepreneurs are trying to compete in the organized market of India, the unorganized market of India is actually a very huge market, which has a huge scope of both profits and growth. And it's not just Decathlon, but even other legendary companies like Haldiram and Havels, they've built a million dollar business by capturing this unorganized market of India. Lesson number two, with the rise of the e-commerce wave in India, the touch and feel factor has become one of the most powerful and yet one of the most underrated elements in business. So while you may start your business online, do not ever ignore the physical touch and feel factor that offline stores can offer to your products. And lastly, always remember, product innovation will always trump marketing innovation. In short, if you fundamentally make great products, marketing becomes a secondary instrument of sale. And that is the mark of an extraordinary business. That's all from my side for today guys. If you learned something valuable, please make sure to hit the like button in order to make YouTube Baba happy. And for more such insightful business and political case studies, please subscribe to our channel. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.